I think this is like the perfect dish for home cooking. It takes relatively minimal effort for something that's gonna be really, really good. And there's like so many different things you can do with it. Hi, I'm Alini Yamamoto of the Upcoming Furies in New York. I'm stuck at home. I find myself with quite a bit of potatoes and onions in my house. I knew they were gonna last and in thinking about what I wanted to make, Japanese curry is kind of the perfect solution for that because it uses a ton of both potatoes and onions and it's also my favorite comfort food. Japanese curry is, it's a little bit sweeter than when you think of like Indian or Thai curry. So the base is caramelized onions and you wanna caramelize them really hard. So right now we're just gonna chop a ton of onions. My kitchen kind of sucks. <laughs> you just realize how poorly home kitchens are set up sometimes. So we've had to like do some like serious rearranging in order to make it somewhat more efficient. Like the fact that the stove is like so far away from the counter, any counter, and sink drives me completely on the wall. <laughs> it doesn't have to be exact because like they're gonna cook for so long. You want them to be like relatively thin. All right, all of the onions. So I'm just gonna heat up the oil a little bit. It was like a couple of tablespoons. I mean, just so it doesn't stick at first. And we're putting all, all of the onions in. Japanese curry is like, it's one of the first dishes that I ever learned how to make at home. So I'm just gonna like turn this down and we're gonna let those onions hang. While those onions are cooking, I'm just gonna get an apple ready to go. Japanese curry usually has an apple added for like a little bit of sweet, a little bit of sour. You can use whatever apple you have. And I'm just gonna, again, we're blending it all up so it's not like a huge deal. Next, I'm just gonna prepare some of the vegetables. Let's start with the potatoes first. For I stopped going outside regularly. <laughs> I bought a bunch of potatoes and onions because I think they keep really well. Any kind of like root vegetable is gonna keep really, really well and you don't have to put them in the fridge. We'll do these like, mm, not like too big of cubes. They're like slightly smaller than bite size, I would say. I want the potatoes to cook a little bit faster because we're gonna throw them in to the pot at the same time as we throw some other vegetables. So yeah, little, little bite size cubes of potato. And because I'm doing all the vegetables at the same time, I'm just gonna put them all into the same bowl. Again, fewer dishes to do. Okay, next we have carrots. These carrots have been sitting in the bottom of my vegetable drawer for a really long time, but I think they're so good. I only have two carrots though. I usually like more carrot, but oh well. There's this great Japanese word, shogunai. It means it cannot be helped. And honestly, I wish the English language had a single word like that, that had that meaning. It's great. There's so many times in life where tough luck, you can't help it. Shogunai. Cauliflower, which is kind of like a non-traditional add to um, Japanese curry. How about some broccoli? I don't know if I want to use all of this broccoli though, because listen, I don't want to go to the grocery store again for a while. Just saving some of those. I like to use the stems of broccoli a lot too. The skin of the stem can be a little bit tough. So I just like cut off the outer layer and then I'll just chunk the inside. Look at this. So many beautiful vegetables. I like to add red pepper also. Something else that I had in the house. Um, if you don't have red pepper, use something else. And this will cook a lot faster so we can do like kind of like bigger pieces of this. Let's check on the onions again and then we'll grab some chicken from the fridge. Kind of like sticking a little bit to the bottom of the pan, that's okay. That's part of the caramelization process. <laughs> See, it's just starting to get a little bit brown. We want it to be even darker than that. I'm just chunking the chicken, like kind of like bigger than I did the potatoes. Check the onions again. It's getting like kind of a little bit too stuck over there. So I have my dashi right here. A tiny bit, just a tiny bit. To kind of loosen that part up. 
and then we'll just let it keep, keep cooking down. I'm gonna go ahead and add these apples now. They'll cook a little bit then. We can add curry powder. We're gonna kind of do it by taste. I think it's probably gonna take like two tablespoons. So we'll just see. We'll add some now and let it like meld with the onions and then when the whole soup is together, we'll taste it again. If we have to add more, we have to add more. You can take these onions a little bit farther, but I think I'm gonna declare this fine. I'm gonna add some of this dashi that I had made. And again, if you don't have dashi, use chicken stock, use vegetable stock, use water. It's fine. So now that we have it like a little bit loose, I'm gonna use an immersion blender to blend this all up so we have a really smooth base. So we're gonna add more dashi to this. And honestly, this is all kind of like based on how big of a pot of curry you want in the end. So we're adding everything in. Give it a nice little, nice little stir. And it's a little bit loose right now. It's also gonna cook down. And the potatoes are gonna add starch to it. So for now, trust, it'll be okay. So we're just gonna let this like hang out there for a while. So now we wait. <laughs> The vegetables need to cook, and once they get like kind of like most most of the way there, we'll throw the chicken in. It's bubbling, bubbling. I have it on pretty high, mostly because I want it to evaporate a little bit because I added too much dashi, which is fine. <laughs> like it's gonna be okay. So we're just gonna add that chicken, give it a little stir, and then let that cook. I'm gonna put the rice kind of on one side. Oh yes. Beautiful Japanese curry. Mm. That looks great. Mm. Perfect. I think that's great. <laughs> It's got like the sweetness from the, the caramelized onions and the apple, it's spicy already. You could also add more, like if you want it to be really hot and that curry powder wasn't enough of a spice, add some hot sauce, add some chilies, add some whatever to it. Um, really, this is just like your base recipe and you can play with it and make it what you want. This is perfect for me though. So I made way too much <laughs> curry. So I'm actually going to put it into little pint containers and freeze it because um, I have space miraculously and it'll freeze really well with the vegetables and all you, like that's a great easy meal. The next time I want it, all I have to do is make a pot of rice and we're good to go. So I hope that you guys all stay safe and healthy. Enjoy cooking in your home kitchen. I'm recording on that one, so. Yeah. Mm. I think we got it. No, I don't think we need a, <laughs> I don't think we need a side angle of me eating. That's a little bit weird. <laughs>